Routine. That's what it was supposed to be. A routine story. I'd been sent to cover the possible conflict between loggers and environmentalists. As the chainsaws got ever closer to another old growth forest. Support to protect the thousand year old trees was strong all across British Columbia. The people had another cause to rally behind. Yet unknown to me, nor the loggers fight to keep their jobs that would become the story. Instead, the forest unlocked one of its hidden doors and released a mysterious, evil legend. And now I realize that the dark forests that surround everyone's town survive with their own rules, their own unknown purpose. Maybe I'm being a bit melodramatic, trying to give depth and meaning where none exists. But the events of the past few hours affected my life like nothing before. Like I said, it was supposed to be a routine story. Trees, loggers, environmentalists. We've all heard it before. But in the blink of an eye, my eye, the mundane took a sickening twist. Before I get too far ahead of myself, let me tell you how the events unfolded. It was about 12.15 a.m. A long day on the road and a late dinner was putting me into Hope, B.C. later than I wanted. Story of my life. Suddenly, through the midnight fog, I spotted a figure standing in the middle of the road. Another darn hitchhiker, always looking for others to complete their journey. That quick assessment nearly cost me my life. And my story. The details become blurred after that. I hit the creature doing 80 kilometers an hour. What I hit is unknown for now. One thing is for sure, it wasn't human. Experts would tell me later that traces of white fur were embedded in my radiator. Animal fur. But I digress. Smoke and pain brought me back to reality, just in time to see it again. At first, I thought it was dead. The second wrong assessment of the night. Slowly, and I recall this with such clarity, the creature calmly disappeared into the fog and smoke. But not before it had left behind a message. What it had left behind was the remains of 11-year-old David Newsell. Naked, decayed, mutilated, almost beyond recognition. The body of this tiny child looked no better than a roadkill. For the first time in my life, I prayed. When the authorities arrived, I could barely give them a complete sentence. They questioned me well into the morning. The first deliberate thing I did, almost upon instinct, was call my editor. I, Anna Brooks, had just set in motion the wheels of hysteria. I later found out that David wasn't the first child missing recently in the valley. Others thought to be runaways were now being speculated upon. Unfortunately, David's parents were the only ones to see the results. David's mother is now in a hospital. The RCMP immediately began the search. Chief Inspector Cron was to be the media's contact. Besides the police, it seemed like every male with a gun also began his search. They were determined not only to kill the Bigfoot, but to totally annihilate it. For the next few days, everything became a target. Paranoia replaced logic. The rules were simple. Anything that moved was shot. The body count of mistaken animals continued to mount. Media exposure soon grew out of hand. Even more frightening was that another young boy had disappeared. Before we had any answers to David Newsell's murder, a whole new set of questions and fears surfaced. What had started as a local Vancouver story about old trees had quickly turned into the news sensation of the year, spread across Canada soon. Combine this with the activists out to protect the senseless slaughter of wildlife, environmentalists still trying to save the trees, loggers, more police, scientists, even more media. You can begin to grasp the utter chaotic state that this Fraser Valley community was now faced with. The tragic death of young David Newsell had been turned into a circus, complete with crowds, lights, and someone to call the ringleader. I kept trying to convince myself that it was my job. If I hadn't started the story, someone else would have come across the young boy's body. I remembered that at the first chance, I had called my editor. I keep repeating, Anna Brooks, you were only doing your job. Let me get this straight. You accidentally, emphasis mine, had a knife up to that dear old lady's throat because she was going to buy it and couldn't read the brand name? Sounds convincing so far. Well, now I'm wondering, Mr. Jinsu, what kind of deal can you cut me? Get it? I tell you, man, she came up to me first. Regular customer, you know? Of knives? I doubt it. Sure, man. She's the wife of a local butcher, and they were recently robbed, and... Could you move it a bit to the left? Thanks. Anyways, they was robbed and needed to replace some uh, equipment, man. Listen up, man. Just between you and me, this lie is getting way out of hand. I've wasted enough time on your two-bit excuses. All I'm after is a simple confession. So here are your options. You either tell me the truth, or... When an hour passes, these webs will dissolve. At which time, you will find yourself swimming face-first in garbage. 
I highly recommend you decide quickly. Because according to my watch, your time is about... Honestly, I didn't... Ah! Up. Or should I say down? Perfect. Almost one hour to the second. Filth has just met Filth. I have to admit, it was a pretty awesome belly flop. A quick call to the authorities and my business is done here. Call later. And they say the fun has gone out of superheroing. Just when I think I've been in the business too long, I'm rejuvenated by a new burst of creativity. My new motto is, if you can't scare them into honest life, you can antagonize them when they're down. I like it. I better get home now, I'm only about four hours late. Mary Jane's not going to be too impressed. Okay, so I get a little carried away playing Spider-Man. Now remember, Peter, you just finished teaching that honesty is the best policy. Oh, think quick. Hi, MJ? You see, I met this knife salesman and... All right. I'm off the hook. Fast asleep like a little baby. I'll get it, MJ. Peter, when did you get home? Oh, just a minute or two after you went to bed. Hello? Parker, you've got exactly 25 minutes to pack, grab your equipment, and get to the bugle. I'm sending you on the Bigfoot story. Well, since you've asked so nicely, I'll be there in 24 minutes. Parker, I'm in no mood for your... Why me? Because everyone else was busy. I hate having to leave my sweetie again. I'll make it up to her when I get back. Being the mature superhero wife, she understands. But on top of all that, she's going to take the Simpsons and Twin Peaks while I'm gone. One hurried explanation and a taxi drive later. So Jonah doesn't want his paper to be left in the dust with this Sasquatch story. Fine, I can understand. That he chose me to take the pictures, that's a given. But to hook me up with Melvin Gooner as the reporter? This trip could be longer than I thought. Maybe Jonah's trying to torture me. Hope British Columbia is a nice place. It is now the seventh day of this event. My reports will continue to come in on a daily basis until everything is settled. The idea of writing it from my perspective has been suggested by my editor. Since I broke the story, it seems natural to tap my own emotions. I am tied to this in some involuntary way. More than that, I actually created the hysteria. I created it. But my duty is to report the facts to the people of this province and help guide my paper's journalistic duties. Through all of this, I keep asking the same question. Why? What possible meaning can this have, on a human level or on a divine level? One boy is already dead, his body viciously abused that forensics still can't determine the actual cause of death. Another boy, Bill Rice, is still missing. Who knows what horrors he's been through. We can only hope that the boy will turn home soon. Having lost his way in that forest, and that is just a matter of time, before someone finds him. Safe. On the eighth night, things turn horrific. Well, boys, looks like that sighting the inspector received is just another scared farmer. Better call it a night. Sweet mother of mercy. Mitchell, what is it? God, is that the rice boy? The dogs are going wild. Keep them back. Now! Cripes! What's wrong with them? Inspector, over here, hurry! I think it's the boy. Looks like the report was right. This is Inspector Cron. I want an emergency crew and all available agents over to the Nichols farm. I mean now! And for Christ's sakes, keep the reporters away! Jeez! I can tell by the remaining clothes it's little Billy Rice. Mitchell, get over to his parents' house and move them before the media gets wind of this. Miss Newsell's still in the hospital with her breakdown. The rest of you boys, we gotta get this creature. I'm not talking in two weeks. I mean fast. In 24 hours fast. Something evil is out there, and it's our duty to blow its brains out. Too dead. Anyone who was a skeptic until now has been instantly converted. People have waited long enough. They want results. Most of the citizens have pulled their kids out of school. At night, save for police and media, streets are silent. People are hiding their emotions behind steel. Others arm themselves for war. The situation has gotten completely out of control. The media are not helping matters in the least. Quite the opposite. Part of the boy's limbs were missing. It seems to be the only worthy fact to us. The media. Hello, sweetheart. How's everything? Peter, I was wondering when you'd call. I'm doing fine. The question is, how are you? Are things as bad as the papers say? Fortunately, they're not good, MJ. Melvin and I are staying in Chilliwack. Everything was booked up in hope. Yeah, things are pretty hairy right now. I don't know how much longer I'll have to stay. I know, darling. Do what you have to do. I just can't stop thinking about those poor boys' parents. Life isn't supposed to happen like this. 
No parent should have to see their child die before them. I know. I saw a few medical photos of Billy Rice. It just... I couldn't take it. I left the room and cried. Big, tough guy Spider-Man. You'd think I'd seen everything. But all I could do was cry. It's okay, Peter. We shouldn't ever get used to the horrors in this world. You gonna be okay? Sure. I think I'm gonna step out for some fresh air. I love you, sweetie. I love you too. Bye. Day nine. Seems like the creature is everywhere again. The town's imagination has torn apart any sense of logic. The beast can't possibly be in eight spots at once. Rumors begin to fly. Maybe there's a whole race of them. Maybe they're biding their time, waiting to wipe out the entire town. A sadistic smorgasbord. Beast devouring man. These thoughts people are whispering. It is no longer a circus. Biblical prophecy has taken its place. My mind is becoming numb. My energy just isn't there. And more importantly, neither is my heart. I need to divorce myself from the brutal slayings of innocent animals just to atone for the actions of one. Think about the boys. They were human. These are just animals. Just animals. Things that can't reason. This madness must stop. Things that act irrationally. Huh? These Canadians keep saying how civilized their gun laws are. How Americans shoot anything that moves. Thing is, they haven't had a reason till now. The animals were harmless. Now they're dead. I've counted five dozen. Amateurs. Looking to become heroes. Want to be the one to bag Bigfoot. To bag the baby killer. They don't understand. No animal would stick around in this kind of war zone. Idiots are shooting at ghosts. And shadows. <laughs> and animals. Say your prayers, bub. It's time to meet your maker. If I'll take you. Please. No, I beg you, don't. You what? I beg you. That's it? You beg me and I'm supposed to change my mind and feel remorse? Why? Because I can understand your pleas, see in your eyes that you don't want to die? It's unfair that you're defenseless and mean me no harm, yet I have the power to blow your head off? Now you know how they feel. Those animals that you and your friends are slaughtering want to live just as much as you. Difference is, they can't beg. Nature's been taking care of them for thousands of years. Survival is their goal, and keeping the species alive. A simple formula until man becomes a factor. You know, if they could speak and say, please don't shoot, I beg you, I don't think we would. Our consciences wouldn't let us. But they don't, and nature wasn't kind enough to give them a trigger finger, so the killing continues. <laughs> Fortunately for you, I'm in a generous mood tonight. You spread the word to your friends that killing is wrong. Make sure they get the point. Oh, one more thing. You breathe a word of our meeting to anyone, you won't be given a chance to beg. Sure, sure, okay. I promise. No further words were spoken. None is needed. Kind of funny, though. Don't think I've ever seen a fat man move so quickly. Hope his friends don't shoot him. But seeing as most of his kind are usually quite simple and a bit forgetful, he might just need a little reminder. Hunter's smart enough to tell folks that kids vandalized it. I know exactly what you mean, Peter. All this killing and hysteria makes you sick, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, excuse me a minute. Melvin, you aren't actually going to eat that mess, are you? Ketchup and donuts? Sure, love them. Please, Mel, don't put that in your mouth. I haven't slept much and my stomach is empty. So unless the aroma of barf sounds appealing, I'd abstain. Jeez, Peter, what a lightweight. I'd have figured you'd be tougher than this. But after the way you reacted to some of the medical pictures of the mutilated boy, it's understandable. On the other hand, I don't quite know why they'd release those photos but say the tests were incomplete. Usually they would do things quite the opposite. Pictures aren't the norm. Maybe there are just different rules here in Canada. The inspector and his crew seem to be aggravating the reporters more than anything. Why would they want to add hassles to this case? Guess they like all the attention. But the way information's getting out is only making this town more paranoid. You'd think they'd be holding info. Not throwing out flares. Hmm, good point. Things are getting too crazy. But you can hardly blame them. Two kids mauled by some monster. Hundreds of media teams crawling everywhere. Not the usual diet for this town. Speaking of which, if you move that bottle one more inch, I'll... Sorry, Pete. Must have lost my... Head? Jeez, looks like a riot out there. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. 
Give you time to finish your donuts in peace. Butcher, fanatic, lives are at stake. What gives Psycho. you the right? You can't shoot everything. Listen, I'll crack your skull. Hey, pal, what's up? Somebody leaked out there. They found over a hundred dead animals. So Greenpeace groupies are exchanging opinions with the Rambo types. Top it off with the nosy reporters, and we've got us a day that me and the missus can be proud of. I can see that you're impressed with this too. Say, you ain't one of them, are you? No, no, I'm from Chilliwack. Big city slickers. Don't need them. Especially them troublemaking Yankees. They don't understand nothing. Ain't no Bigfoot out there. Just a critter the Indians call Wendigo. Of course, no one wants to listen. Especially them Yanks. Guys seem to steal everything. Our pride, our exports, the worst of it all. They even stole Gretzky from Edmonton. What kind of hockey player would want to live in sunshine all the time? I tell you, boy, he was brainwashed. Nightfall. Ditched Melvin. Now I can do my own investigating. Anything to speed up this mess so I can get back to Mary Jane. Wouldn't have taken this assignment if I'd have known it would drag on this long. Unfortunately, I've got to stay in the shadows while I'm here. It'd be too easy to figure out that the Peter Parker in New York of Webb's fame is also in Hope, B.C. with Spidey. I don't need complications. I need answers. The biggest mistake I've made so far is not bringing the thermal underwear. Melvin thinks there might be answers at the top. I still can't believe he eats donuts and ketchup. The man's touched. Hope the RCMP building is this way. It is, but two hours go by before the payoff. Finally! I'm just about frozen to death. You'd think they'd have the courtesy to show up when I did. That's how it works in the comics. Listen here, lady. You got something to say, then say it. Otherwise, I've got problems to deal with. There's 400 reporters, environmentalists, and rookie hunters I'm trying to handle, as well as keeping this town in some sort of order while the media makes a circus of it. Poor you. People tell me you leaked the body count of the animals to the representative of the Humane Society. You're creating your own problems. If I give any information, I'm causing hysteria. I give up none, it's a cover-up. You got any suggestions? I'm all ears. If not, then let me do my job. Your job doesn't include causing a riot. You're supposed to stop them. Just because you broke the story, Miss Brooks, doesn't give you permission to slander. So why don't you go write your next story about flesh-eating monsters and sell an extra 10,000 copies? Spidey, my boy, things are definitely starting to heat up. So that's the Vancouver reporter who ran into our so-called Bigfoot. Or as the old man said, Wendigo. Time to catch a fly, Spidey. Too bad I can't scare. But there are other ways to extract info, namely the famous, but often underused, Parker Persuasion. It's not for nothing that the babes swoon over me. Betty, Gwen, Felicia, Mary Jane, ah, the list is endless. Ah, who are you kidding, Petey? The real reason you want to get answers is to get home to your wife sooner. And in the meantime, try to rid this place of some godforsaken monstrosity. I hope the boys, at least, died quickly. Can here. Someone bring Luke Thorpe. I don't care what it takes. It's time we took the offense. If anyone can track this creature, Thorpe's our man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Then sober him up if you have to. Also, have ten men standing by. We're gonna have Thorpe lead us to it. And we're gonna get rid of this headache once and for all. What? You tell them to shove their policies. Better make this quick. Don't want a loser. There she is. Well, Peter, time to go to work. Excuse me, miss. Thought you'd like to know that this creature you're chasing is called Wendigo. From the Indian myths? It's a flesh eater and has white fur. Sound familiar? You want to get a coffee? Bingo! That's pretty impressive research you've done. Didn't know the Wendigo was as popular as Bigfoot. But the bit about it actually being a person cursed with a creature's spirit and body is a bit much. Still, if a guy like Thor can exist, then anything's possible. What I can't understand is why. When they have an expert coroner from Calgary, the RCMP insists on shipping results to Vancouver for another opinion. Seems like the red tape is more important than comforting the dead boy's parents. Can you imagine what they must be going through? I guess in a small way I can. Lost a girlfriend once. Thought the world of her. It was the first time I was truly in love. We even thought we might get married. But I couldn't protect her. Couldn't help her. Now I'm happily married to a woman who gives my life more meaning than I thought was possible. Still, can't help but wonder how things might have been. Then the guilt sets in for even thinking about it. But I can't forget. It wouldn't be right either. Sorry for your pain, Peter. I gotta tell you, you sure break the typical New Yorker stereotype all to pieces. Huh? 
Oh, excuse me, Anna. I don't usually feel sorry for myself. It's just the thought of those boys and that thing. I know what you mean. The story has gotten way too personal with me, too. Unfortunately, I've got an editor back in Vancouver who expects my column every day. And to tell you the truth, Peter, I could use the boost that this story has given my career. Not to mention the extra money. My job is to write something that sells papers, even if I don't have all the facts. Nightfall. Finally. Time to check out where the first boy was found. Reporter said creature laid boy out on road. This is it. No blood. Just some moss and dirt left behind. Stench of rubber still strong from the reporter's car. And my suspicions are correct. But now I've got a trail. Didn't want to believe it was back. Then why'd you come? Your instincts are always right. Wendigo. This country keeps turning its myths into reality. Now we've got a baby killer. Creature's sin is like a beacon. Only thing interesting is the smell of the dead animals. Nice rationale. We can't find one creature, so slaughter another. Eventually, we might be right. Humanity. What a concept. Fortunately, I won't live forever. Here's where the boy was buried. The ground is still moist with blood. Nature's way of giving me clues. And unless my senses have gone haywire, which they haven't, this area is in big trouble. Gotta find someone in town I can trust. There are other bodies out there. Thor, where are we headed? All the reports have been from the west end of the summit. The man's a loony, John. He's also good at what he does. He must have his reasons. Yeah, well, I wish he'd let us in on some of them. How many more hours are we supposed to spend out here? The guy moves through this forest like a man possessed. Maybe he is. Great. Behold, gentlemen. Your treasure. No one move. Now! Now look at what you've done! Guess I'd better try and find Melvin. He's probably wondering what's going on. Promised Anna that I'd keep her facts to myself. Might as well get a good night's sleep. Looks like another dud evening. That wasn't an animal scream I just heard. The Wendigo's just been found. By fools. Those fragging idiots. Why'd they try to kill something when they don't have all the answers? A few dead kids and all sense and reasoning disappears. Guess humans just need to pin this on something. But to go after Wendigo? That's insanity. The creature will shred them apart before they blink. Considering what they've done to other animals, it's their own problem. Yeah, and I just happen to be running in the right direction by coincidence. Curse my conscience. 500 meters away, a nightmare is occurring. Led by the town tracker, six men attempted to hunt and eliminate the creature that has been killing their children. Before they could get a jump, nerves got the better part of one of the posse. A shot was fired. Like any animal backed into a corner, this wendigo means to defend itself to the death. These men had no idea what this creature was, or even if it truly existed. But the attempt to protect their own species may very well be the last thing they do. With a bullet in its belly, the monster carves a path through the hunters. It has been hunted long enough. The forest is its home, a place of safety, but recently, that has been shattered. The sound of motors and guns and men have disturbed the natural way of things. Forest creatures have dealt with enough. Wendigo will bring about its own sense of order. The posse is smart enough to leave the ruler of this jungle alone. They can't pay me enough. No way I'm gonna die for some godforsaken monster. We gotta tell the inspector. Hey, hey, where's Eddie? Did that chicken get a head start already? He'd better not have taken the wagon. Wendigo. C go ahead and kill me. See if it takes you as long to slaughter a man instead of children. The creature just stares. Finally, it raises its arm for the death blow. At that moment, Eddie is gripped by fear. In the back of his mind, he thinks this is what the children went through too. Suddenly, like some wild banshee wolverine strikes, broken glass being dragged across sheet metal best describes the sound he makes. Whether it's for bravado or instinctive, the noise accomplishes its purpose to distract and to save. Keep your head down, bub. I'm gonna state the obvious here. I think you should leave, now. Uh, yes sir, right away, sir. Those Mounties are such a polite lot. Won't pop my claws. This whole situation ain't Wendigo's fault. I'll just keep on the defensive until the hunters are all gone. Of course, Wendy doesn't know I'm being so charitable. This'll make things a bit more challenging. Come on, Peter, wake up. We got a story. Some cops are back in town. They said they met the Bigfoot. Jeez, what time is it? Who cares? We're on to something big here. It'll take 20 minutes just to drive to Hope, so hurry it up. This could be the break we need. Someone other than that Vancouver reporter who can verify this creature. Plus, we know what side of the mountain he's on. The thing doesn't have a chance. 
Say, I didn't know they made Felix boxer shorts. Melvin, I'll see if I can't find you a clean pair. Come on in and sit down. I'll be ready in a minute. That Melvin, what a jerk. To tell you the truth, Melvin, I'm getting tired of this story. I didn't realize it would drag on this long. Plus all the information that's being linked out is just complicating things even further. Peter, if we can befriend one of those injured cops, there's a chance we can all go home soon and have a great story too. I think I see him up ahead. Lovely. Wendigo's inserting himself too much. He can't afford to lose more blood. Bullet must have hit an artery. If he doesn't stop fighting, he's gonna be in serious trouble. Not that I'm enjoying this. Ah, oh, no. Not again. Come on, Wolvie. Do us both a favor and end this. Then get into town and find an ally. Let them know what I found out here. Everyone's on a wild goose chase. What'd it look like? How big was Did it? You find any there other kids? Was there a stack Why of bodies? Still alive? Tell us what happened. Was anyone killed? Okay, big fella. Guess it's time to join you at your level. Costume was bugging me. I need to be as free as possible. See how it reacts to something as savage. As animalistic. As wild as itself. I drag my scream out for 30 seconds. And then I just stare at Wendy. He won't look at me. Never had a showdown before. Don't think he likes it. Not my problem. Maybe he's lost too much blood. Maybe he's just had enough of us stinking humans. Whatever the reason is, he just leaves. I've got to get to town and straighten this mess up. Been too many innocent deaths already. On both sides. Melvin, I'm heading over to the police station. I can't believe they just let those officers run off at the mouth without any kind of debriefing. Then I'm going to find Miss Brooks and see if she has any leads. I'll catch up with you tomorrow back at the hotel. Sounds good. I've got the address to the tracker who took these guys out to the mountain. Maybe he'll be useful. Peter, see if you can find out when the new forensic report will be back from Vancouver. Yo, Spidey. I think I could use a bit of your help. Uh, what did you say? You heard me, boy. I've got a slight problem with this Wendigo fella. I think you can help. Meet me half a mile due north of town in a couple of hours. You'll get some answers then. I disappear into the night. Believe me, I'm just as surprised with his presence as he is with mine. Two hours later. I don't know what's going on here, but it's time to find out. That stranger's voice sounded familiar. He didn't set my spider sense off, so I've got that going for me. I'll have to go into the police station tomorrow morning, then meet Melvin to see what he found out. You know, Peter, you don't need these complications in your life. It's hard enough trying to figure out who this Wendigo mess is without worrying about some night-prowling stranger. On the other hand, what other good-looking superhero is in town? So, got that going for me, too. Fortunately, that stranger called Peter Parker Spider-Man, which is a problem. 3,000 miles from New York and some guy in Canada knows my identity? It doesn't make sense. I don't know anyone in British Columbia. Heck, I hardly know anyone in Canada, period. Mary Jane and the people at the Fugue are the only ones who know I'm here. More questions. That's all I need. Certainly not in any mood to go through any meaningless attacks like I did with that Craven Witch last month. She was something freaky. Heck, all the villains are freaks. And I'll know if I'm dealing with another in about ten seconds. Clearing is below. Might as well make this dramatic. Never fear, Spidey's here. In his underwear. Real mature, schoolboy. Wolverine! You'd be face down right now if I were the bad guy. You didn't know if I were a friend or foe. Why would you give me an edge? The fool who signals an enemy isn't long for this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the lecture, Pops. I'll have the car home by 11. What's your problem? I've been in this business longer than you. My spider sense told me you weren't hostile, so I thought I'd have a little fun. Speaking of which, why the old yellow and blue suit? You got a reunion to attend after? A couple seams came loose on the other one, so I wanted to put on something that reminded me of a time I didn't know you. Oh, he made a funny... I think this guy has some potential. You never stop, do you? Nah. Besides, it keeps me young. So what brings you here? Can't be the crowds or the hype. It's the killings. The thought of dead animals, especially dead children, sickens me. I've seen my fair share of sick situations, but this one's contagious. Those fragging hunters are determined to kill everything until they get it right. And unfortunately, I can't stop them all. Which is where you come in. Great. Now I'm supposed to stop the hunters. Unless we forget the RCMP, the environmentalists, and the reporters. Facts, buddy. I've got to have something solid. Ah, shut up, kid. I don't want you mowing them down. Just remove their motivation. Let them know their target's in town. Just keep them out of the forest. Listen, I've got a hundred innocent animals slaughtered out in the forest by some hyperactive weenies. They think Bigfoot killed the boys. I say he didn't. I went to the road where the first boy was found, where the reporter first saw our Bigfoot. 
The smells told me that it was a wendigo that carried the boy there. I followed the trail to where the boy had been buried. The stench of a human adult was still evident. The wendigo didn't kill that boy. He just happened to stumble upon the body. To verify my suspicions, I went to the field where they found the second boy, Billy Rice. You know what my senses said? No trace of wendigo anywhere. Only smell of that same human adult and dogs. So I went back into the forest to track down the wendigo. Before I found him, I came across a couple of his kills. Both were deer, no human flesh, ever near. My problem, the hunters continue to kill the animals. That will not continue. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that those two dead boys have nothing to do with Wendigo? Whew. That is a problem. We've got an entire town believing that a seven-foot monster is going to snatch their kids and drag them into the dark. And with the media blowing this thing way out of proportion, I can hardly blame them. I tell you, Wolvie, from my media experience, once the wheels of propaganda have been set in motion, reality becomes a moot point. Plus, Anna Brooks, the reporter that cracked this story, tells me someone is leaking information that adds fuel to the fire. These people want a Bigfoot. They'll get a Bigfoot. It's the only way they'll feel safe again. And I've got to admit, six officers getting attacked by a Wendigo doesn't help any. They attacked him. Do you understand? He didn't provoke anything. They hunted him. And when he was shot, he did what any injured animal would do. He defended himself. It's not his problem the cops are so easily scared. But we're getting off the point. The hunters, the RCMP, they're armed. They can shoot back. It's the innocent animals I'm concerned about, and the kids that you should be worried about. Time to make a choice. But I'm in like Flynn. Okay, then let's go catch us a murderer. Day 10. Finally happened. Someone else has seen Wendigo. As a matter of fact, six people saw it. There were officers in the bush, hunting down this savage baby killer when the monster attacked them. Two were in the hospital with injuries. The others are shaken emotionally. I understand the fear. To face something eye to eye that you don't believe exists is disturbing. It blows all of your previous assessments of life to smithereens. If a creature like this can roam the forest undetected for who knows how many years, what else could exist? What other horrors could be lurking outside our windows without us ever knowing? But now we do know. From my selfish perspective, that's good. Ever since that first night when I ran into the Wendigo with my car, I've wondered if it was actually real. The blood, fur, and flesh wedged into the grill of my now-crushed car said it was. So. Even though the attack upon the RCMP is a horrible reality, their sighting now makes it feel like I'm not totally alone. The weight off my conscience will now allow me to sleep with some sort of peace for the first time in 10 days. As for the RCMP officers, luckily they were armed. Maybe that's why the creature chose the children. They were innocent, harmless, easy prey. Good, she's in her room. One officer reported that they found the creature almost instantly with the local tracker Luke Thorpe leading the way. When the monster viciously attacked, the Mounties shot back. They said the Sasquatch was hit, but were unable to determine the extent of the wounds. Does this mean that we may have seen the last of... Miss Brooks? It's me, Peter Parker. She is not going to like this. Heck, from what Wolverine told me, I don't like this. Peter, come on in, and please call me Anna. I was just writing my column for tomorrow. I'm sure you heard about the attack. So what do you think? That's why I'm here, Anna. I've been given some information that strongly suggests that someone in town killed those two boys, not the Wendigo. What? That's absurd. I wish it were, but the info I've gotten from my source says this whole Bigfoot thing has been a sham. Yes, the Wendigo exists, but it only happened upon the Noosel boy for whatever reason. It was bringing him closer to town when you ran into it. We have to let the people in on this. But that's not why I'm here. We've got a madman running around who's a possible child killer and no one knows? This is crazy. You come storming in here to tell me that Wendigo, who is crating around a poor dead child, and who attacked those Mounties, is innocent? Give me a break. I've been busting my butt on this story, covering every angle. So far, nothing points to humans. I don't know why you'd do this, Peter, but I expected better from you. I thought you were different than the other shark reporters. What would possess you to do this? Because it's the truth. Listen, Anna, I hate this as much as you do. Because the sick thing is, I wouldn't have been sent here if this was only a murder. Routine murders don't sell papers. I'm not here to wreck your story. At this point, I wish it were true. But the evidence I have says otherwise. What evidence? Show me. And just who is your source? I can't say right now. You can't say. That does it. You take your so-called facts and you shove them. I'm writing the story of my life and I don't have time to deal with professional jealousy. Now get out of here. I'm sorry you feel that way. Now it's me who would have expected better. Before I go, you ask yourself a few questions, since you seem to have all the answers. 
Why did the boy have on clothing and the other didn't? Wendigo wouldn't change his habits. And why have the forensic reports been delayed? Except for a few facts that were helped to fuel the fire of the confusion. If you're interested, I've got plenty more unanswered questions. You know where you can reach me. Somewhere in the deep forest, an innocent victim struggles to maintain consciousness. It feels a burning pain deep in its belly, although it cannot rationalize why it's there. The word bullets has no meaning. It doesn't feel right. That much it does know. So instinctively, the Wendigo does what it can to help itself. The fight with the RCMP and the Wolverine have taken their toll, especially with gunshot wounds to even the odds. The creature cares about none of this. <laughs> Somebody's gonna pay dearly. Spidey better be doing his job, cause I'm getting tired of waiting. Time's running out. I thought Anna could help me with the other reporters. Guess the hype has swallowed her up too. Looks like I'm on my own. Can't risk exposing myself right now, cause that would just complicate matters. So, the RCMP is my next bet. But why do I know they're not going to welcome the news or the ramifications? Because dear Spidey, you've been down this path too many times. I hope they'll believe some of the evidence I give them. If not, Melvin's gonna become my buddy real fast. You know, I'm getting tired of you guys. You can't get your story the proper way. You just make up your own answers. But I'll take all your suggestions in a serious professional manner. Unless, of course, you'll produce your source. I've already told you I can't. Listen, it's all here in this folder. I just thought you might be somewhat concerned about the truth. We'll handle this. Sure, thanks for nothing. Let me see that folder, Carl. What kind of twisted mind would blame a local? Who knows? Guy was pretty hyper though. He said he was from New York. Figures. Said some interesting things to Frank and me. But you'll see it in his report, Inspector. God, if this gets out, we're in big trouble. Someone get me Thor up. Where'd he get this stuff? Wounds starting to soften up. Good old Mother Nature works every time. I haven't done this in a while, so I better make sure the area's numb. Don't need Wendy to flinch on me. There. That about does it. Now it's work time for Dr. Adamantium. Funny, I don't get to use these claws for positive reasons that often. It's nice to know my Vegematics can do more than slice and dice, though there's something to be said for that too. Now if I can just stop this bleeding and... Got it. If the wound's not infected and the Wendy doesn't strain himself, I think the operation will be a success. Here's a souvenir, bub. I'd give Spidey two more hours. Then it's my turn to convince the good citizens of hope. If he doesn't come bringing good news, then I'll go into town and sniff down the bloody pig myself. No one's gonna die while I'm here. A living cancer is walking around killing, and it's my job to make him terminal. You can't be serious. Come on, Peter. You're just a photographer. How'd you get that kind of information? It doesn't matter. Are you kidding? Everyone's on the path to the left, but you say the answers are on the right. Better believe it matters. Mel? I wasted an hour just tracking you down. Time is crucial. You'll get all your answers later. The cops are useless right now, so we've got to do this on our own. Come on, even if this were true, we can't stop the wheels of paranoia. We're in this, whether we like it or not. Wrong. You're in this. I'm just a photographer, remember? I can make an idiot of myself. And because my career doesn't hinge upon this story, I can let an odd piece of doubt enter in. I'm not saying I've got all the answers, but you're going to have to accept that neither do you. I'm not asking you to go out with my men this time. You do whatever you have to. But unless you can nail this creature in the next 48 hours, I don't need you. There are rumors that could devastate the community and- Like the killer might not be the monster. What? How did you know? Just a hunch, amongst other things. Look, Thorpe, we need to give the people something. Anything. I understand what you need. You're not concerned about this killer. You're worried about your neck that's about to be chopped. I'll get your big foot but it will be on my terms, my way. I don't care about catching a sacrificial pig. I just want those annoying reporters out of my woods. I'm not concerned about your motivations. It's been 10 days. I want that creature dead by day 12. That's how you can have the woods all to yourself. Wendigo. Glad to see you're feeling better. Who says you're wimpy? Now, before you rip my head off, let me tell you what's up. If we don't solve this little case of mistaken identity soon, I don't think your odds of living the year are very good. Heck, surviving the week. But we don't have control over that. What we do have control over is where we go and when we go. So you need to follow my lead. I have to find another body. 
That'll be the last piece of evidence they might want. And I promise, you've got nothing to lose. Trust me. Oh. Though the creature can't understand, it trusts something. Its instincts. This stinks. Anna won't believe me, the cops won't believe me, and Melvin's an idiot. I just can't understand them. Just because Wendigo had the dead boy in his hands and attacked the Mounties, what kind of reasons are those to assume he's guilty? I wouldn't believe me either. But I can't bring Wendigo here. He'd be dead before he hit the city limits. Whew. What a story that'd make. Actually, Wolby could hide Wendigo. That's not a problem. What bothers me is that our murderer is down there, and I can't do anything about it. I can't let anyone see me, which hinders my daytime activity. I'm getting to be like that bat fella. I don't think I've ever seen a sick a story as this. Careers, headlines, prestige. My god, are we missing the point? Even worse, do we want to get it? Are sales going to dictate our ethics? So there's a murder. Yahoo! We've read about that before. We wouldn't want to think about the boy's parents and family. They'd become a freak show. I just don't know anymore. Mary Jane, where are you when I need you? Well, time to meet Woolby, but he is not going to be impressed with my effort. Then again, neither am I. I just hope he was able to find something. It's been a long night. For the first time, Wendy howls not with pain or anger, but with anguish. Wendigo. The media won't believe us. The RCMP won't believe us. Cripes, even Spider-Man's partner won't. They're idiots anyway. I've given them all the clues they need. But everyone's caught up in the light show. Well, Spidey had his chance. Time to alter our tactics. I'm tired of giving them a choice. From now on, we do things my way. Period. Because I want them here. You got a problem with that? No, no. Just, uh, wondering. That's all. Good. We just found another body. Another boy. I'm going into town. I need you to babysit for a while. Come on, Wolby. That's crazy. I'll go get the Mounties, then I can... Wendigo! Sheesh. Okay, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. You've had your chance. Now it's mine. You don't expect me to... Wait here? You bet your rear I do. I've got enough dead animals here to dam a river. And that dead boy's there. He's not the last. I guarantee it. Your friends don't want to believe you. Fine. But I can be very persuasive when I need to. So you just enjoy some time with Wendy. I'll be back to give you further orders. Oh, if you decide to change your mind, I think the media would be quite enthused with a couple of facts. Get my drift, Parker? Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of the kid. My god. What have they done to him? Wendigo! What now? I'm just trying to help. At least let me cover the boy up. No! I need the boy out in the open so I can get a confession. I want the murderer to see his aftermath of his actions. Wendigo will keep any predators from the body. Your job is to stop the humans. Mine's to make them pay. Wendigo's belly's still mending from the bullet wounds. Make sure he doesn't get too excited. What if he tries to go for the boy? I told you he doesn't eat human flesh. Not yet. He's hiding from the hunters. Thinks we are too. No sense in changing his mind. Now wait a minute. How long am I supposed to wait? As long as it takes. Now kindly remove your hand before you lose it. Before you go, give me one good reason why I should listen to you. I'll give you more than that. One, we've got three dead boys and counting. Two, we've got hundreds of dead animals and counting. Two and a half. I'm a moody little cuss. I promise you don't want reason three. I turn to leave thinking that I've made my point. Or should I say points? But I swear that Spider-Man is one of the gutsiest fools I've met. Or the stupidest. Either way, you've got to admire his persistence. This time, Wendy makes my point for me. Looks like he's convinced Spidey to stay. <laughs> my, aren't we protective? Later. Hope ain't such a bad little town. But it'd be a lot nicer if some of the leeches weren't here. I can tell the residents have just about lost their patience. So I'd better finish this hunt. Covered half the town already. Shouldn't be a problem to finish the rest. The scents coming from the boy I found tell me whoever did this hangs around town. Good thing, because I didn't have time to check those who live in the sticks. Whoever the pig is that killed those boys, a stink of death. Sad part is, he's gonna make this too easy for me. Which brings me here. Now, if I can just... Got him. Now ain't that interesting.
Got to do this so the boy's parents know the truth. As we enter the 11th day, the tension is still unbearable. I can't believe how consuming this whole affair has been. The speculations of the uninformed makes trying to bring you the truth even more difficult. Rumors abound. I heard one about how Bigfoot attacked a couple in a cabin, but the woman talked the creature out of killing her husband when she showed him her husband's chest. The Sasquatch was so impressed with how hairy the man was that they bonded. I guess they both were half man, half beast. What a piece of junk. What am I writing for, the Inquirer? Face the facts, Anna, my dear. Peter has you confused. If even a little of what he says is true, I'm totally wasting my time. And Towns. But this is a chance of a lifetime. I can't screw up. How many times will I get the right headline news? All this stuff isn't my fault. I can't control the actions of others. But I have to compete with them. Look out for number one. This is unreal. To use my name in vain. There's nothing sacred anymore. Oh, you got a patent on the name? Come on, eh? Wolvie told us to sit tight. He can handle it. Eleven days. I'm not so sure. Come on. He's a pro, eh? I'm a professional. I can't let others get to me. I have a job to do and deadlines to meet. Hope Peter and the others can learn to live with themselves. I sent in a false report that gets the cops moving in our direction, saying that Thorpe has Wendigo pinpointed. The inspector sends out a posse of six, all armed to the teeth. Thorpe is supposed to lead them to the slaughter. Unfortunately, I've got other plans for him. Thorpe is closer to the situation than he thinks. He's a good tracker, but not that good. It's time you and I had a few words. With Thorpe in my grasp, I can settle this thing my way, quick and clean. Spider-Man's methods didn't get results. I don't know why he's such a goody two-shoes. This little piggy went to the store. This little piggy wants some more. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. Aren't we mature? Heck, Wendy's a pushover once you've gotten past the disgusting thing he calls a face. So, what's up? There's six Mounties about a half a mile from here. Three are on the northeast side. The others are on the west. I need you to stall them for me. And what's your part? To end this thing. Tonight. I don't know what's going on, but if you can somehow nail this creep, then do it. For the first time, it looks like we're on the same wavelength. Hope it lasts. On the south side, there's another guest. I leaked out a different location to the inspector's group. Marty! Jimmy! Where the heck are you? I took out another two. No sense in having a crowd. Besides, it's the inspector's presence that I need tonight. But first, let's disarm him. Initially, I step on a dry branch to get his attention. Huh. Then I make sure to keep it. Cripes! I think he gets the message. Bub, I'm looking for a confession and I'm gonna need your help to get it. So follow me, cause there's something I want you to see. Don't wanna hurt these guys, just run a bit of interference. Can't let any of them see me though. The town's got enough problems. Only six of them now. But I heard one say the hunters will be coming as backups. I'll have to do this fast. Webbing them up is fast. Cause it'll disappear in an hour. Won't have any evidence I was here. Still, how do I get the Mounties immediately to believe our story? Cripes, is that Thorpe? You're freaking right it is. Now you can just stand there, Inspector, and I'll make everything clear. The first boy the reporter found, David Newsell, wasn't killed by Bigfoot. My senses found only human odors. The only reason they sent out the autopsy to Vancouver was to verify the injuries. The boy wasn't mauled, only decomposed. The second boy, Billy Rice, was found at Nichols' farm. Only thing is, old man Nickel never phoned in the report. It was a setup. That boy was different. He was mauled, but by dogs, not monsters. He was wearing clothes the first boy wasn't. Reports of dead animals set the humanitarians against the hunters. Another smokescreen. And now this third boy, naked and decomposed. Creatures don't change their habits. People do. You wanted the hills to yourself, didn't you, mountain man? But your sick perversion backfired. Yeah, there's a monster out here, all right. But it's not the Bigfoot. You kidnapped those boys. After they ran away from home, figured no one would miss them. Then you kept them and abused them. Had to satisfy your twisted need for little boys. Please. Funny no one noticed the victims were all young boys. In the end, you disposed of them when you were done, burying them to rot in the ground. You're sick. Do you hear me? Sick! This is for the boys! Die, pig! Die! Okay, easy part of stopping these guys. What do I do now? Wolvie well, said he'd get some results, but somehow, I don't trust his methods. He seems to be more reckless than I am. 
Fortunately, I haven't been able to do squat. Been handcuffed into trying to hide my identity. I think it's time to forget about my needs. Pretty sick, huh? Fact is, he didn't kill the boys. You did. I just didn't want any witnesses to see what's going to happen to you. I don't know what you're talking about. Have it your way. But I think there's someone here that says differently. Where go? Please, keep him away. I'll do anything. Then start talking and don't skip the good parts. Okay, okay. I admit it was me. The boys, they were having problems. They were gonna run away. Didn't mean to hurt them. But what if they told? So I planted the rice boy. Had the dogs chew him before I buried him. Forgot to take off his clothes. Didn't think anyone would notice the first boy didn't have any. Then I stalled the autopsy. Sent it to Vancouver. Figured if we got the Bigfoot, then I'd be safe. But the reporters, they, they wouldn't. Guy's even crazier than I thought. But he rambles on for about ten minutes before doing something stupid. You'll never stop me. Here. Idiot. I don't need to stop you. Thorpe's been awake the whole time. I pulled my claws before I slugged him. He's been playing possum so he could hear the truth. Besides, your confession's on tape. Stole a pocket recorder from a reporter in town. Figured it'd take the word of Thorpe and your voice to convince the media. They trusted you, Kron. But you abused that power. So you can run, but you can't hide. When the town folk learn the truth, I'm sure you'll get what you deserve. Not, I'll even the score myself. Twenty-four hours later. Well, Thorpe convinced the cops about Kron's guilt. Give them all the info they needed. Funny thing is, media wasn't too happy. Guess a monster killer is more exciting than a human. Anna Brooks eventually wrote a legitimate article based on the copy of the tape, but her editors didn't consider it front page news anymore. Pretty sick world when the truth isn't worth printing. The boys' families have been discarded. The reporters got their story. Now it's up to the others to pick up the pieces. At least they've still got their Bigfoot mystery. Plus, it's kind of poetic how Kron was shot and killed by hunters, who were there caught up in the hysteria he created. But there are still a few more bodies out here in the forest. The least I can do is take them to town, give the parents some sense of finality, instead of having them wonder if their boy will ever return. It'll give them an answer, but crush any hope they might have had. Jeez, what a mess. Nice job, Pete. You have dead boys, dead animals, and a dead child molester. Seems like we achieved a lot. I'm getting tired of these other so-called heroes' methods. We have to find ways to solve these things better. Wolverine, Punisher, Ghost Rider, they're starting to make me as sick as the villains. God! What's even scarier is maybe this is the best we can do. Hope Mary Jane can convince me otherwise. Hey guys, if you like this video, please give it a like and a comment. It really helps the channel and I love to read through them. And subscribe so you can keep up with all the uploads. Also, please consider becoming a Patreon. The support helps me make more time to make more videos and upload more often. The link is in the description. If a monthly donation doesn't suit your interest, consider giving a one-time tip to my PayPal. Link is also in the description. Thank you for watching. Till the next time.